What is up guys, welcome back to the video. So today's video is gonna be based all around tires. Now, why is that? It's because I am switching out the tires on my BMX bike with the Alienation 138 tires tomorrow, doing that tubeless compatibility test version two. I've already done it with the Alienation Prowler tires when I had the original prototype, which is actually in this lineup right here because it's the only 2.4 tire that I have to go off of. So today's video is gonna be based around the tires, kind of talking about the specs of each tire, what the differences are ranging between 1.95 all the way up to 2.4, and as well as kind of teaching you guys a little bit about tires and the internals of the tires and kind of what makes it what it is. All right, now when you look at these tires, the first thing you notice is the tread. Not just because we're looking at it right now, but the average person, when they're looking for a tire, they're looking at the tread design to see if that's what they're into. Actually, there's four key components that make up a tire, and that is the bead, the sidewall, the casing, and the tread. So the tread is what you're seeing right here. Now the tread is going to be what differs from all of the tires and will be most noticeable when you're actually looking for the differences between a dirt and a street tire. So that is something you want to take into consideration depending on the style of riding you plan on doing. Now when looking at something such as the sidewall, the sidewall is the second most closest thing that you look at when you're looking at the side of a tire. This is a 2.4. The 2.4 is going to have a taller sidewall. We'll compare it to a 195 right now. Now that right there is an old school 1.95. I actually took this off of my, my original bike that I found on Facebook Marketplace. I found somebody that was selling the exact bike that I started riding on, but you know, I digress. So this is a 1.95 tire. So the sidewall is gonna be a lot smaller. The width of the tire is gonna be a lot skinnier than what you're noticing on the 2.4. 2.4 is so much wider, as well as the sidewall. And actually it's a beefier and taller tire if you look at that. All right, so I'm gonna use this Maxxis tire as an example. This Maxxis tire is foldable, so the foldable design is gonna be easier for us to kind of look at the casing section that we're talking about. The casing is measured from bead to bead in the interior. That's what gives the tire its shape when it's opened up fully, just like this. Now, the difference between this and this one, well, that would be the Kevlar bead versus the wire bead. Now the bead of the tire is this portion right here. This is what keeps it anchored. Now this comes in Kevlar as well as wire bead. And there is another version of a Kevlar bead as well. Since this is not tubeless compatible, I have a tubeless compatible one that I'll show you right after this. That has a little bit more of a hook on the bead itself to be able to keep it anchored to the rim. Now a traditional steel bead or what most people like to call a wire bead is a lot heavier and less costly way to get new tires. While the Kevlar bead gives you a lot more of a foldable design, more flexible and malleable, and a lighter design, it can come at a cost when you're trying to buy a set of tires. Now I've run a lot of different tires over the years. I actually used to run two different tires back in the day. When I say back in the day, we're talking like 10 years ago, which really wasn't that long ago in the industry, but I used to run like a dirt tire and a street tire in the back because uh, there wasn't really many companies making well versatile tires like they do today. So we would, we would kind of sought after maybe, I guess the most popular design was like the KHE Dirt and the KHE Max Street, which is still pretty popular today, but there's so many different tire designs that kind of compete with that. Now people want to gravitate towards a tire that is more versatile. What I mean by more versatile is in something you don't want to switch out and you're not really going to be affected whether you're going from dirt to park. See, riding that dirt tire from KHE, when I used to ride park, it would make a loud humming noise. You would actually get a lot more friction and you wouldn't be able to travel at a higher speed at the skate park but it worked out really well on the streets. It was pretty low profile. I wish I had that tire to kind of give you a comparison right now, but I'll put a picture up on the screen to give you an idea. The tread really wasn't that bulky, but it was enough that it would slow you down. Now, since those days, a lot of people graduated, like I said, to the KHE Max Street tire. And then that became like a big fad that kind of people faded away from once more companies started to do tire designs. Now, talking about tire designs, they can actually be pretty costly for a company to be able to make a tire, upwards of $30,000 to make a tire mold. So. Take that in consideration when you're when you're buying a tire from a company before you start to trash talk companies remember there's a lot of invested time energy money and skills into the process of making tires for your bike also not just that i also want to mention the different compounds that they go through to be able to do the testing process to be able to get the right tire out to market uh, an example would be the alienation prowler tire i was running the 2.4 that i just showed you they actually have a new version it's on my bike right now a 2.25 which they added this micro curling effect to the tire to give it some extra grip because that was the problem with that tire so each tire kind of goes through its own testing phase before it goes to production so we're going to start with the 195 the 195 who is this tire for right i have a buddy named keith schmidt shout out to you keith if you're watching this video my buddy keith swears by the 195 tire and why does he swear by it he swears by it because he thinks that it rolls faster which it does it is a skinnier tire but that also comes at a cost so if he lands flat he's compromising his rim more than i would be because i usually run a 235 or maybe even 2.4 which he also calls like a monster truck tire some people have their opinions on different widths uh, let's just carry on to the next one. I'll talk about why I think people go from the 195 to the 2.0. Now moving on to the 2.0. I also have a 2.1. I want to see if you guys can tell the difference between the two. 
These are both Maxxis Grifter tires. The orange one you see there is actually a one-off design. They never made this in production. This was actually made for when we were doing halftime shows for the NBA. They didn't want us to leave any marks on the court, so they had us uh, run these orange ones. Well, it just so happens that the orange one is the 2.0 that you see. Now, there's a 2.1 right there in the black. It's a slight difference. Not a lot of people would notice it, but some people will, and it all depends on the width of your frame. So as you get further and further in the spectrum of a wider tire, you wanna make sure your frame is able to take it. But since I'm holding these Kevlar tires, I'm gonna show you since this black one is already torn, I'll show you what the inside of the Kevlar looks like. All right, as you see here, this is the inner bead of the Kevlar tire. Now, all foldable tires have an inner bead that's just like this. This one actually happened through a pinch flat. I, I can't tell you exactly how it happened because I can't really remember, but I would imagine that I cased something pretty hard and it broke that bead. Now. The same thing can happen to a wire bead, uh, but once that wire bead is exposed, it's kind of the same thing, the tire shot. And actually, more so often with the wire bead versus the Kevlar. I've been able to repair the Kevlar beads over time to be able to get some use out of them to kind of just stretch its lifespan. All right, I had to go digging at my house for this one. This is a premium tire. A lot of you OGs might remember this one. This is one of the first foldable ones of its time, really light for its time. This is a 225. I actually have a 225 on my bike right now so I can show you the width of it all pumped up. All right, now this is a 225, but this is also the Alienation Prowler tire, but the width of this tire is gonna be the same as the one I just showed you. Um, as you see here, here's that micro curling that I was talking about earlier where they did the change between the original design, which I'll also put up on the screen right now to kind of show you the differences between the micro curling as well as the OG version of the prototype. I'm still running some Alienation carbon rims, just in case anybody's wondering. These things have been running so strong. I'm not gonna take them off unless they plan on making colors, which, which that might be in the near future. Now, like I was talking about earlier, you wanna make sure you have clearance in the back end of your frame. So the width of your frame plays a big factor. If you plan on putting like a 235 or a 2.4, you might take a chance on rubbing on either side of there or even your brake arms if you have brakes. All right, now onto another Maxxis tire. And you guys are probably wondering why I have so many Maxxis tires. It's because I used to ride for Maxxis and I have a lot of them left over. So with that being said, this is the Maxxis Riser 2.3. 2.3 compared to the 2.2, like I said earlier, there's not really gonna be a ton of differences with these tires, except for the fact that your personal preference with the tread pattern and the sidewall height. These are all gonna play a big factor on your riding style. So let's just say you're more of a jibby style street rider, like you like to stay low to the ledges and rails, then you might wanna lean more towards the 2.4, which we're gonna talk about here momentarily. If you're more towards like park, you might be like 1.95, 2.0, 2.2, or maybe even 2.35, if you like to try to mix it up between street and park. But before we get to the 2.4, we have another tire to go over, but I also wanna mention that the Maxxis riser tire is a great in-between. If you're a park, street, dirt, ride everything type of rider, this is a great in-between right here. I used to run these things front and back when I was riding for Maxxis and absolutely loved them. They're kind of a different, cool design too. Pretty aggressive looking tread. All right, so the next two tires are gonna be perfect in-between tires. This is kind of what I dabbled between with the 2.3 and the 2.35. All right, so this is a 2.3 and I just opened it up. This is the Alienation 138 tire. It actually looks like this in the packaging. This is how a foldable tire comes in the packaging. All folded up, really easy, super light. You're gonna notice a big difference when you're picking this tire up versus a wire bead. Now, another question people have is, why do you go from wire bead to Kevlar bead? What's the big difference besides just standing weight? Well, it's actually rotational weight. So when your tire is spinning at its fastest, it is at its heaviest point. So that rotational weight actually plays a big factor when you're in the air doing like tail whips or 360 tail whips or even just jumping you'll notice the weight of your tire rotating now if you want to go even a step further you can do like tubalito tubes or you can even do the tubeless compatibility design that i plan on doing these tires are one of the only tires that are tubeless compatible and they're only tubeless compatible with the alienation rims now when i stopped riding for maxis one of the first set of tires that i ever bought was the Eclaw Mirage tire. This thing's pretty beat up and used, but you get an idea, this thing is a very well-versed, well-rounded type of tire. Ever a dirt, street, park, anything and everything. I like to ride everything, and I don't like to switch out my parts to accommodate each section of riding. So if I'm riding dirt, I wanna ride the same tires on dirt as I would park or street. And now to the big boy. This is the 2.4. We talked about this previously when I put on these Alienation Prowler tires. These are the full production ones down here. This is the original prototype, 2.4 is a big, big tire. And a lot of you street dogs might absolutely love it and you love it for the right reasons. The right reasons would be impact. So if you're jumping off something high, you want all that impact dispersed as wide as possible. Now, if you had like a 195 tire on there, like I said earlier, it's gonna be pretty aggressive and harsh on that rim and probably bust out your wheel. All right, so now let's talk about tread design and what's best for you. And I can't tell you what's best for you. All you can do is try to best decide for yourself when making the purchase, because it's gonna be pretty hard. There are hundreds and hundreds of different style tires out there. The best way I think it might be easiest for you to try to figure out what type of tire you want, you try to think about the type of rider you want to be. Maybe look at who you really like to watch. What tires do they have? Do you want to ride more like them? Do they 
gravitate towards more street or park? Um, are they more of a dirt rider? Are they well-rounded? Try to pay close attention to what they're riding. As you see here on the screen, look at all the different tread designs I've showed you through the course of this video. A lot of them are street-based, but they're actually pretty well-rounded. You can ride these on street and dirt. Now this 195 specifically is more dirt-based, and they do make 2.0, 2.35, and all that with dirt tires, but you are gonna notice a big difference if you ever go to the skate park. It's gonna slow you down, and you're gonna notice that friction. So to answer that question for you, what tires should you get, I can't answer that. Only thing I can tell you is go out and ride as many different people's bikes as you possibly can to try to figure out what best suits you and then figure out what type of riding you wanna do. If you think that you're gonna be a well-rounded rider and you wanna ride everything, then focus on a tire that you can ride everything on. Not to say you can't ride everything on a dirt tire like I showed you, or ride everything on a street tire with the lowest profile design that I showed you. I'm just saying that a more versed tread pattern will best suit you. So if you guys found this video informative, drop a like on the video, drop a comment below, letting me know what set of tires you're running right now. And if you guys wanna see another type of video like this in the near future, be on the lookout. I'm gonna be doing a tubeless compatible video here tomorrow, and this is the sealant right here. This is what you put inside there to replace the tube. So. I've done this in a previous video with the Alienation Prowler prototype tires, and now I'm going to be doing it with the Alienation 138 tires, and I'm super psyched to be able to put on my bike. So with that being said, if you guys have any suggestions for future videos, put them in the comments below. If you guys like this video, drop a like. If you love it, hit that subscribe button, and I'll catch you in the next one.